All right, as, as, let's conclude our topic tonight with prayer. Amen? Amen? So, in the middle of our Christian walk, we have an enemy which is called the flesh. The flesh is uh, very, very strong, and a lot of people, they want to pray, but then they get discouraged because they find it very difficult to pray, is it not? Because the flesh is very, very heavy. So this video might be something that you all might appreciate, or some of you who are really struggling might appreciate. I'm going to give you something that might be extremely encouraging. It may not be as hard as you think when you live in prayer. So I hope that this teaching might help you. Now Jesus, you'll notice uh, when you look throughout the entire Bible, Jesus, he isolated himself to make time to pray to the Lord. But here's something very special you got to understand. As I studied all the characters in the Bible, the character that impressed me the most with prayer is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He actually lived and breathed in prayer. He just didn't dedicate a prayer time like Daniel, where he makes time three times a day. What he did was he lived in prayer. You might say, how so? Because it's not just where he set, made time to pray to the Lord. Even in the middle of of his living and activity, he would pray to the Lord in just one verse or a couple sentences. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And then what did Jesus do at verse 21? In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is, etc. So, what's going on here? Notice that Jesus was talking to his disciples, but then, during that time, he prayed. Now, here's the key over here. The key is this, I think the reason why we all struggle in prayer is because we feel like we have to set aside time to do it. So because we feel like that, oh, we have to set aside time to do it, then it becomes difficult to pray, does it not? I mean, let me say this, if you were to, let's say that uh, one of our brethren on WhatsApp said, please pray for me on this issue, and then some of you might feel guilty where... You know, you do pray for the brethren, but it's right after he texted, and in the middle of your driving, you're praying for that brother and sister, and that's it. So then, because of that, it does cause guilt to you, and you wonder if you gave a lazy prayer, right? Well, here's the thing. It may be lazy, but here's the thing, is that even people who are not lazy pray like that, too. Amen. Do you know why? Because these people, they just don't pray while they're on their knees and bowing before the Lord. Everywhere they go whether they do a Nehemiah prayer or like what Jesus did, they'll just talk, they'll just literally talk to God. Just one sentence. Amen. You know what will help you with your prayer life? Why don't you start? Uh, prayer is not a machine. It's not a machine that you take time and it's dreary. It's actually living in it. Living, isn't that living in prayer while you're driving, you're praying to the Lord? Amen. Before you eat your meal, you pray to the Lord? While you, uh, you're brushing your teeth even, you're praying to the Lord. When uh, an accident happens and then someone's bleeding in front of you, you cry in tears and pray to the Lord. Isn't that living in prayer? Prayer is living in it. It's not a machine where you just set aside time and do it. Now, of course, everyone should have their quiet time where they should set aside and pray to the Lord. But you got to realize this. If you think that's your only prayer time, listen up now. If that's your only prayer time, you're not living in prayer. Can I repeat that again? I don't care if you prayed five hours on your knees straight, fasting to the Lord, and then uh, that was it throughout your day. You know, you closed your day. Oh, I'm done with prayer. No, you're not done with prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says what? Pray without ceasing. Amen. Now, I'll tell you what, if you use your heads now, if you start living, not just being a machine, okay? If you start living in prayer, what do you think is going to happen to your prayer life then? It's going to increase. Oh, it's a lazy prayer. Okay, call it lazy, but keep doing it. And then what's going to happen is going to be a habit, a natural part of life. 
Prayer does not become work now. It becomes a natural part of the air you breathe now. Amen. Why don't you start living in prayer, huh? Not ju- uh, pray without ceasing, right? Do what Jesus did at Luke chapter 10. Here's another one. Go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Man, it's so hard for me to pray, Pastor. Well, then why don't you... Uh, all you have to do is this. Then pray for him to help you to pray. Isn't that simple? Did you even do that? See, the flesh is so weak, but if the flesh is weak, that's that more of a time where you got to cry out to Jesus and say, Lord, help me to pray. Is that natural? Yeah, look at uh, verse 1. Came to pass that he, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, what? Teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Why don't you give that, why don't you cry that out to the Lord. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach me to pray. I think you notice sometimes I would say that in my prayer life. Why? Because uh, even if you're a great prayer warrior, I mean, I, I can, sometimes I can tell from these people. I mean, I'm not going to name some of these IFB pastors, but I feel like some of them are just so pious. They brag about like they fasted 30 days or something like that. And they're living their prayer life and the way that they pray. And then when I listen to them pray, I could tell it's like so deliberate that they're trying to put over there. So I, don't impress me. But even if you can do spectacular prayers like that, let me tell you something. That, that person is not a prayer warrior. Why? Prayer warrior is not all these KJV words that you use that is so impressive and that use old English, you know, and then people think that you're George Mueller and Lancelot Andrews, etc. That's not a prayer warrior. Charles Spurgeon, who preached about prayer, he says, look, prayer is not something that you... But make it a machine in your head and then you make it all like wording from the Bible. You just do it simply out of your heart. That's what Spurgeon said. Why did Mueller say that my prayer is closer to the word of God? Because he's actually reading it and using the simplicity of the heart to just say it. Not deliberately like knowing all the KJV words and putting it in his prayer. You see the difference over there? You see the difference of a machine and living in prayer. I think the title of this video should not be where you're struggling in your prayer life. I think it should be the machine of prayer versus living in prayer. You know why people are struggling so much with prayer and you feel like you're not a prayer warrior? Because you're not living in prayer. You're in a machine. You treat prayer like a machine. It should be living. It should be living in it. Amen. Uh, let's look at more stuff. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. My favorite topics to teach is not end times, conspiracies, mythology, or the deep doctrines and the deep need. It's prayer. It's prayer because it's totally life-changing. Prayer is something that would... That's the most benef- beneficial thing ever in your life, you got to understand. It is the most benef- beneficial thing ever in your life. Not... Ver, not Verichip or Gates vaccine. It, prayer is the thing that's life changing. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Look at verse uh, 40. He cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could he not watch with me one hour? Verse 41 Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the what? Flesh is weak. Okay, man, this flesh is so hard, right? But Jesus gave you a key here where you can defeat the flesh. A lot of people aren't paying attention. What did Jesus say? Jesus said at verse 40, what could he not what? Watch with me one hour. Verse 41, watch and pray. You know what helps you pray? You watch. And then you can pray. You're not watching. What is watching? It's like reflecting. It's like being careful. It's considering. It's being careful, looking around you. A lot of people don't do that. Why are you struggling so much in your prayer life? You're not watchful. There's something that's hindering you from prayer. The busyness of work, for example. Or maybe it's because you don't set aside time to do it. See, the problem with you is that you're not setting time to watch. You need to watch 
And then what's going to happen is that's going to be more helpful in your prayer life. For example, if you were watching, then you could pray. Why? Because if the problem of your, uh, of your flesh is, I can't pray because my flesh feels so tired. Well, if you were prepared for that, see, watchful for that, like, okay, I know that 5 p.m., I'm going to start to get tired. I'm going to be ready for that. And when you're more ready and prepared to do that, then you can pray. Amen. A lot of times we don't watch and then we just go by however our flesh feels. And whatever our flesh feels, that's why we bail out in prayer. But let's even take this literally. Watch is like watching, looking. Jesus said uh, at verse 40, watch with me one hour. What, ha what happens if you are to watch and look at your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, kneeling in the garden? Uh, tell me this, church. If you were Simon Peter and the other two, and you saw Jesus praying fervently at the Garden of Gethsemane, and you watched him that whole time praying to the Lord, how he prayed fervently, doesn't that do something to your Holy Spirit? I'll tell you what, whenever I see some of these prayer warriors pray, pray or hear their sermons, I can't help but just fall on my knees and pray. Maybe you need to watch more prayer warriors. You need to watch more people praying. You need to watch more prayer sermons. When your flesh feels tired, listen, watch a prayer sermon and let that motivate you to pray. Uh, Leonard Ravenhill, they're like these uh, couple minute clips of Leonard, Leonard Ravenhill praying. Man, when you hear that, you just want to pray to the Lord after that. Uh, when we did our all-night prayer meeting, didn't it motivate you? Why? Because watching other brethren doing it. How about that? That will help you conquer the flesh. Now look at Romans 6. Romans 6. Let's close it off over here, and good night to all of you. Thank you. Romans chapter 6. I think we really don't understand Romans 6 here. Concerning about the flesh with Romans chapter 6... What did we learn? In order to conquer the flesh, the flesh must be dead, right? And then the spirit should be alive, right? The spirit should be alive within us. Now, I think this is our problem. We don't make the spirit alive to us, and we don't make the flesh dead to us. Let me give you an example. If you really believe, okay, because Romans 6 goes like this. Um, I would suggest listening to my basic doctrine teaching victorious Christian life. That's one of my best basic doctrine teaching. And that's conquering the flesh and living in victory in the spirit. But if you all recall, what are the three full steps, if you recall? One is you got to know you're dead. Two, you got to reckon, you got to apply that you're dead. The third is you got to yield to the living spirit. And I really think that we do not understand this. Let me explain it this way, okay? If you were living throughout your day and persecution happened, your flesh is all tired and all that, and your joy of the Lord is gone, if you actually really believe the Holy Spirit is inside you and he's filling up within you and he's saying, I'm, uh, hey, you ready for power today, child? You ready for God? I mean, we're talking about a God who can move mountains through prayer. You ready to do that? I'm about to use you. I'm about to move you. Let's, let's unleash the power together. Do you sense that feeling of the Spirit all over you, child? And then when you actually believe in that, no, it automatically applies to yourself when you, ima when you imagine, think, and believe in that. It automatically does that to your flesh. And you're like, and then you cannot help but say, man, I'm about to step on the threshold of eternity here. The third heaven, the throne of glory. I'm about to step in front of God himself and then give a request, and he's going to answer it mightily and move mountains. This is the man who said, peace be still to a storm. This is the man who raised the dead to life. This is the man who took a couple uh, meals and then fed 5,000. I'm about to unleash the power. When you do that, see, you yield to the living spirit within you, and then what happens? That flesh automatically became dead. And that is, when you do that, you're actually, now it makes more sense, you're living in prayer. Living. 
That's what it literally means. You're living in it. But you're not living in it. You're living like the drudgery of traffic, work, family problems, school problems, church problems, health issues. See, you're not living in the spirit. You're living in the what? Flesh. That's, that's uh, I'm understanding a little more. I'm not the most spiritual person, and I still have trouble comprehending it, but I started to th see a threshold of glory now. I'm starting to th see the threshold of the Spirit moving. I know what it's like now to kind of enter into that realm, that dimension of the Holy Spirit now. Well, I start to see that in my daily life. When I pray to the Lord, ex for example, concerning the enemies who attack me, or for God to intervene and to take care of an issue, I know what it's like to enter that threshold now. I start to understand and comprehend that more. Every activity we do as a church or in the middle of my preaching, I see the Holy Spirit moving. I can, put, I can see the pattern where it's heading now. Why? Because I'm starting to live in it. When you live like this against your flesh and in your spirit and in the prayer becomes your breath, it automatically affects your thought, your emotions, and the way you move. And trust me, when you act and talk and interact with other people, it's all filling of the Holy Spirit. That's good. Live your prayer life. 